We have often covered the astonishing ancient feats of engineering that went into the construction of the temples at Baalbek within modern-day Lebanon. The enormous ancient megalithic blocks that no matter how adamantly certain individuals claim as relatively recent Roman achievements cannot be explained. How the blocks were cut with the tools available during this claimed era how they were moved to the location they are today found upon, or indeed any idea as to the techniques or methods utilized to have once perfectly placed them within the ancient structures. Additionally, there are many other ancient structures nearby that although currently not recognized as having the same enormous stones used in their builds, still possess impressively sized megalithic blocks, masterfully completed architectural artwork and other anomalies, which may link the sites to many other ancient works all over the globe. One of these sites in particular is known as the Niha Temples, Niha being a village in the Beka Valley within Lebanon, and although the ancient ruins are clearly of an advanced nature, they are, just like the inexplicable ruins of Baalbek, claimed as Roman. Interestingly, in addition to the Niha temples, scattered around the area are a number of mysterious altars that are precisely aligned with the summit of Mount Hermon. An additional fact of interest is that this location is recognized as 33 degrees longitude, 33 degrees latitude. Is this possibly the reason for this degree significance within Freemasonry? Is this location why they are so interested in the geometry of the 33rd degree. Many legends surround this site. In particular, they involve a group of entities known as the Watchers, a purported group of supernatural beings who are known by many names – the Nephilim, Sons of God, Giants, Fallen Angels, Egregores, or indeed Demons. They are spoken about in the Dead Sea Scrolls, Books of Enoch, Scripture, among many other ancient texts. We find it intriguing that this location, which clearly possesses large numbers of enigmatic and incredibly ancient structures, which additionally display stonework carved and created in the same form as many other ancient sites, also within the Temple of Neha, and possibly within many other of the stonework of the surrounding altars, are protuberances. These mysterious notches, which are also interestingly known as boss marks, another possible connection to this supernatural group, are found throughout the world within the many unexplained ancient ruins, such as ancient Peru, the pyramids, Sacsayhuaman, and many, many more. Predictably, however, these ancient altar sites are rarely investigated or indeed shared by academia. Quote, during the summer of 1934, Dr. Stuart Crawford and Reginald Haupt led a small expedition in which we studied the ancient shrine surrounding Mount Hermon. We located many ruins, and in each case, the shrine was so precisely oriented that when the devotees were at them, they faced a chief sanctuary located upon the highest of the three peaks of Hermon. This rare insight was written by Reginald Haupt last century. We strongly suspect that when the now well-established Masonic influences recognized the importance of these sites, they were quickly shut off from any further public academic investigation. Who were the Watchers? Were they real entities? If so, are they still in existence? Is the 33rd degree and indeed its importance within secret society a mere coincidence? We feel that although predictably claimed as Roman, the precision within their alignments, along with the inexplicable nature of the enormous megaliths involved in their construction, is undoubtedly evidence of a far more ancient, far more advanced constructor, and as such, highly compelling. When within this modern world of academic study, a ruin is found, a ruin of such astonishing feature or size, one which is clearly an out-of-place artifact within the realm of its accompanying modern paradigm. No matter how amazing, how historically important, due to its sheer inexplicability, 
one will rarely hear about it in popular debate. And one such ruin is Kat Shibib. The archaeological site was first identified by British diplomat Sir Alec Kirkbride in 1948. An ancient wall over 93 miles long, whose origins are predictably unknown. Ever since its initial discovery, a range of disciplines, including archaeologists, scientists, and anthropologists, have studied the wall. Yet the date of the Kat Shabib's construction, however, is still claimed as unknown, regardless of it also being claimed as, quote, widely debated by archaeologists. Regardless of this claim, many will have never heard of this spectacular ancient ruin, a reality we claim not by coincidence, but design. Recent study of the wall by the Aerial Archaeology and Jordan Project have found that it runs north-northeast, south-southwest, spanning a total unbroken distance of 66 miles. However, they also discovered sections where two run parallel, this for an additional substantial distance. Quote, If we add the spurs and stretches of parallel wall, the total length would be about 150 kilometers or 93 miles, wrote David Kennedy, a professor at the University of Western Australia, and Rebecca Banks, a research assistant at Oxford University, in a paper published recently in the journal Zeitschrift for Orient Archaeology. It is unquestionably a remarkable ancient ruin, one evident of a once highly capable, yet now lost, civilization. It is a ruin which we find highly compelling. We recently covered the astonishing archaeological discoveries located within the modern-day Turkey. We discussed the unexplained ancient ruins of Gobleki Tepe, clearly a remnant of a far more ancient, far more advanced civilization than academia would ever allow contemplation of. Additionally, and the focus of the last video, the other ancient gem known as Norsen Tepe, a highly complex, thus highly advanced, ancient temple, whose contents indicated no less than 40 additional re-inhabitations of the structure after the original construction, now conveniently hidden under several meters of water, submerged during a dam-building operation. Why this operation was undertaken, or indeed why this site in particular was chosen for flooding, may become apparent with our next place of interest. It seems that some of the sites within Turkey have revealed some extremely well-preserved, extremely ancient artifacts, left by numerous as yet unknown civilizations. And although these finds have seemingly been concealed from mankind, fate is seemingly on our side. Ironically, a site of complete opposite characteristics, having not been touched or re-inhabited for untold millennia, has also been unearthed within Turkey. Alachahoyuk a site on the surface perceived to have been a primitive archaeological ruin dating back to 2350 to 2150 BC, over 4,000 years ago. And yet, upon deeper exploration, an analysis seemingly undertaken too late for academia's dating has shown that the site possesses evidence of the same lost technology or more specifically, advanced knowledge of stone construction found at many other ancient, unexplained sites around the Earth, like saxa Huaman, a site we also covered previously. It must be clear to everyone that academia's dating of these sites is not accidental. Was the dating too hastily concluded? We would assume that a dating of over 4,000 years is now difficult to accompany with such advanced knowledge of stone carving and construction. Just how old is Alachahoyuk? And the same question as always. Based on the unexplainable knowledge involved in its creation, who could have built it? The Nimrod Castle, which translates as Castle of the Large Cliff, is an astonishing ancient fortress. And although this awe-inspiring site has predictably been dated to the medieval era, we feel that due to the many anomalous megalithic blocks within its construction, it is far older than this and, undoubtedly, a remnant left by a highly advanced civilization, now unfortunately lost to history, this due to academia's funded and often deliberate ignorance. 
Many of the oldest blocks present within the structure, for example, are all upwards of 10 tons, with some of the heaviest recognized as being over 40 tons in weight. How modern curators and academics alike can attest to these ruins having been created by our tremendously less capable medieval ancestors, we feel, is preposterous. According to those in the so-called No, the fortress was created from scratch during the Ayyubid dynasty, placed within the 12th and 13th centuries. The dynasty undoubtedly existed, this we do not deny. We also do not disagree with the posit that the dynasty ruled large parts of the Middle East during these centuries. However, we suspect that, just like the many other unexplainable ancient advanced ruins found throughout the world, these more recent ruling ancestors, and indeed the large array of ancient artifacts which they left, creating an archaeological legacy, has been used to conveniently date and explain this miraculous structure away, avoiding the controversial truth which is clear for all to see. The fortress is situated on the southern slopes of Mount Hermon, upon a ridge that rises over 2,600 feet above sea level overlooking the Golan Heights. We feel that due to its strategical location, much of the structure was rebuilt upon. This task completed with the purpose of guarding a major access route. We believe that upon the leader of this dynasty, Al-Aziz Uthman, Discovering the enormous, impenetrable polygonal masonry still in existence within the walls of the site, that were left by a people who, at some point within antiquity, mysteriously vanished. This leader made the logical decision to build upon the impressive remnants, with these walls being reused, utilized for a more modern fortress. This second phase, predictably made with far smaller blocks, and thus, can be easily explained as medieval architecture. A fortress could have indeed been its original purpose, this due to its strategically placed location. Indeed, other ancient, advanced, seemingly impenetrable fortresses can be found in other places within the world, such as Sacsayhuaman. Although its true grandeur, or its initial advanced builder's intention for the structure, may take tremendous, meticulous, alternative research to eventually unravel. Furthermore, intriguingly, the enigmatic yet highly recognizable shape of this initial stonework is also present at another site, possibly a number of other sites, although in particular within Jerash, a site currently claimed as Roman. Who built the Fortress of Nimrod? How can academia claim that this site was built by the Ayyubid dynasty, while another ruin, unquestionably constructed with the same form of megalithic blocks, seemingly dating for the same era, be that of the Romans? We feel that these two sites, each containing the same building features, yet claimed as completely different civilizations work, both placed within our more recent history, yet in vastly different centuries is clear evidence of academic fallacy, evidence of their explanative contradictions when it comes to the many currently controversial ancient ruins of Earth. Nimrod Fortress is yet another jewel in the crown of a civilization currently lost to history. It is undoubtedly highly compelling. There are many ways to create a misleading, coercive conspiracy. Yet nearly all good stories, even when mostly fictional, to upstand some level of scrutiny must contain that which is known as the kernel of truth. And these kernels can be found throughout the mountains of ancient stories, belief systems, rituals, and medicines worldwide. Found throughout ancient texts, however, interestingly, there are countless accounts of a great deluge, however, modern curriculums are not about finding the truth within these writings, but a form of conformity. We not only feel that the evidence for a flood worldwide exists, but that the pre-flood civilizations who lived through this event, claimed as secluded, primitive, small settlements, didn't venture far until a much later academically claimed dating. Regardless of this, we are now slowly exposing the truth regarding said events, 
modern technologies, such as ground-penetrating radar, are now being utilized more and more. Many of these studies are finding mega-metropolises, often now resting beneath and amongst dense forests, having been revealed via this technology to have been not individual settlements, but one enormous city, some with estimated populations of 10 million people or more. Facts which are in staunch opposition to modern dating paradigms. Along with ours and many others' personal, in-depth research into the technologies and knowledge of the creators and later re-inhabitants of such sites, have also been proven beyond doubt to have once had shared knowledge. Unquestionably made by people who were in global communication, endless examples of tools, masonry techniques, and artifacts are often found to have all been crafted in the same ways with matching scars found at quarries and upon megaliths worldwide. Yet these quarries, again, bring us back to our original message, that of a shared experience of catastrophe, also one of which being the Great Flood. Maybe these groups worked on huge weather-resistant stones as an attempt to face off against such enormous natural forces. Yet it would seem, although they left their mark on the globe, as our research would suggest were in vain, as they were seemingly wiped out in an instant, with many sites abandoned mid-flow during one of these events. Interestingly, not only would the evidence suggest a sudden disappearance of those responsible for many of the most extraordinary megalithic ruins, there have also been remnants found and documented within mainstream-funded study which is not only indicative of a prior knowledge of this possible swelling of the seas, but an immense effort attempted to build fortresses to protect against such an event, dated as 7,000 years old. From an article titled, quote, This 7,000-year-old wall was the earliest known defense against rising seas. Lizzie Wade states, and I quote, About 7,000 years ago, seas were rising all over the world. Ice Age glaciers were melting, and the ocean crept up shorelines and toward people's homes on every inhabited continent. Now, archaeologists have discovered the earliest known defense against those rising seas. A 7,000-year-old seawall built to protect a farming village from worsening storm surges and encroaching saltwater from the Mediterranean Sea. Ultimately, however, the wall failed. It now lies drowned off the coast of Israel along with the rest of the settlement it was meant to protect." End quote. Additionally, Amy Gusick, an archaeologist at the Natural History Museum in Los Angeles, California, who studied this period around California's Channel Islands, stated, and I quote, "...all the different kinds of responses we see toward sea level rise 7,000, 8,000, 9,000 years ago, we're still seeing all of those same responses today." Discoveries such as these not only proof of our ancient ancestors' awareness in regards to the possible dangers of rising sea levels, but supports the argument that human contributions are not as catastrophic as are currently believed by some to be. The questions regarding their origins, however, who was once responsible for such remarkable efforts, remains a mystery, one which we are determined to solve. It is a journey of discovery which we find highly compelling.